key brain is otherwise. Here we are. Ha! Hey. Oh! <laughs> We're live on YouTube. What's up, Look everybody? At... Welcome to Conjure Community. I'm here with my silly friends. <laughs> Adam, <laughs> silly, Steve, and Adam. I'm Aaron Fisher. Welcome to the world's best magic club. And today we're looking at keyword Earl Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that coming and I just wanted to do it anyway. <laughs> do us a favor before we get going here. Click the like button and subscribe to the channel so you'll never, always, no, never, always, never forget to take a litter bag in your car. It's good it's for the good environment. Advice. And uh, if it gets filled, you can always throw it out the window. Thank you, Steve Martin. Uh, and you'll be notified every time we go live with a new video. Kids, friends, countrymen, what do you want to do today? What's the magic sauce on display? We're going to talk about Earl Nelson today. Earl the Pearl. Yes? Earl the Pearl. You know, Lee Asher was the first person to tell me many years ago that he felt that card magic was a lot like the Prince song, Diamonds and Pearls. And well, Mike for, Douglas, the bird magician in Las Vegas, who also could do a Prince impression, agreed. He was at that conversation. And it's true. So there, are, Lee was a bit of a diamond, flashy, but Earl was the ultimate pearl. So if you like it smooth and graceful, slow, beautiful, impossible sleight of hand, Earl Nelson, he's your cat. A lot of people don't know this about Earl, but... Back when the professor died, Vernon was in his 70s and he was like finding his new life where he was a, a mentor to those guys at the Magic Castle. There was only a handful of people who were really were able to sort of achieve that Vernon touch, you know, from great, uh, great in-depth study with Vernon. And that's, you know, Larry Jennings and Bruce Servan and Michael Skinner. But the other is Earl Nelson, widely known to have that touch himself. Um yeah. Earl was Earl was a, a a man who hung out at the castle when we were there, and uh, he was a, he's a very talented, very talented close up magician, no doubt. When I picture Earl Nelson, I often think if card magic had smooth sounds of the seventies, it it would be he's he Earl was kind of the yacht rock of magic, right? He was so <laughs> smooth. He's definitely he was, a product of his times, right? I mean, he was he was. In the highlight of his of his career, when he was the most famous, it seemed like it was the late seventies or so, and that seems like that's right about that time that that stuff would have been happening. And he was probably a guy in that scene, you know. And the people that were in that scene were definitely coming to the castle to see him. And I'm sure it was just perfect for the times. I'm sure he fit right in with that style of magic that he that he sort of pioneered. You've all seen those groovy pictures of Mark Wilson, you know, and uh, what's the Alan Wakeling? You know, all those groovy pictures in those sure. Alan Wakeling Mark Wilson books. A lot of flared collars, a lot of like right. you know right jumbo on. cards and unbuttoned sh shirts and yes. medallions. You know, Earl was on the scene in that time. <laughs> so after we get started with the show, after we get started watching a little bit of Earl's magic, we'll we'll pop in and they'll tell a little bit of a quick story about Earl Nelson going to Las Vegas to perform at Caesar's Magical Empire and needing to consult his bestie Mark Wilson, the Mark Wilson for a little bit of performance advice about performing in the big LV. <laughs> oh, look at that. Magic Pack. Actually, we were talking a little bit, several of us, before we came out here, and we were... Uh, someone brought up the point of, have ever uh, embarrassing incidents happened to you, you know, when you've just been about to do a show? And uh, I recalled one that happened to me. I was about to go into one of my favorite effects, which is cutting the aces from a shuffled pack of cards. Uh, when the gentleman that was sitting over here reached over very politely and took the deck of cards in his hands and plopped them down in front of him. Very methodical. It wasn't anything I could do. I mean, I didn't want to embarrass the gentleman. He was very nice, you know. <laughs> he cut the pack like this, and he turned half of it face up. So he had about half face up, half face down like that. Then he proceeded very methodically. The guy obviously knew how to handle cards. He shuffled <laughs> the face up cards into the face down cards, just like that. And he wasn't content to do that only once. He did it a couple of times like that, very neatly. I was very impressed with the whole thing. But I didn't know quite what I was going to do. Does it very neatly. To get out of this, he, he very neatly squared the cards up once again like that. Very neatly. And then just to make sure that everything was all right, just he picked the cards up and looked through them like that to make sure he'd shuffled them very neatly, and he had. He gave them a cut, and he put them right down in front of me again. 
Well, I thought the only thing I could probably do at that point was to go into the original effect that I had in mind and try to cut one, two, three, well, three. <laughs> the fourth one could be a little bit of a problem, you see, because of the terrible condition that he left the deck in, all face up, face down. So the first thing I have to do is straighten out his mess like that so that all the cards are facing the proper way. That's three out of four aces. The last one, the ace of spades, is a little bit more difficult. If you watch the exact center of the deck closely enough, you'll see one card and one card alone reverse itself. That's nice. Wouldn't it be nice? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. The smooth sounds of Earl Nelson. You gotta pause that, right? Because Yacht right magic. Now you can see that this was originally taken from a tape called Earl Nelson Unchained After Midnight. Yeah. <laughs> because you can see that, you know, you've never even imagined anyone delivering a classic triumph presentation with an ab in, in Earl's rendition, because it's the only way Earl can be. The gentleman who ripped the cards from his hands was gracious and kind and incredibly well-mannered and quite skillful with cards. Did y'all notice that? Did notice that. He did. He's very, he's very kind. He doesn't like any controversy. This guy stole the deck from you. Well, I could see he could handle cards very nicely, and who am I to stop a man like that? And this may sound silly, but have you ever seen such beautiful slip cuts in your life? Oh, beautiful. All of it's very elegant, right? It's all very it's unhurried. There's no forceful motions. It's very, very clean and beautiful. I, I find it to be a very soothing, soothing show. And I, I, I love it. I love it so much. Agreed. I can't wait to see what Earl does next. Yeah. I just, it was incredible, you know, because Triumph is about people, a man that takes the cards from you, says, let me shuffle those cards. He's drunk, you know, and he turns half the cards face up. He doesn't even realize he's doing it. And he jams the two halves together. But Earl... Earl does it sweet and sweet and soft and smooth. So and, smooth. and Earl can see the bright side of everything, right? This guy was trying to mess up my trick, but I could see he could handle cards well. And who am I to stop this man? And he let the thing happen. I think it's a very good reflection of his personality, right? He found a way to get it in there, even though it's supposed to be that he's having like a fight because it's triumph, right? He's like, well, I'm, I'm not that kind of guy to go down that road. <laughs> right? it's, it's just really cool. And it's not always the presentation. It's the classical presentation. It's the exact trick as written which is a, it's a fine presentation for that trick, you know? That's you know, I think yeah. it's something interesting we should keep in mind is when you see that, I mean, that's like 1970s, right? Yeah, it's gotta be like 77, So, so when you're looking at that Triumph presentation, I mean, when did that book, wasn't the first place that appeared Stars of Magic, is that right or no? Is it way before that? No, that, that, that's, I think that's the first time we framed. Yeah, that so it's like, and that's 70s. So like when you're seeing that presentation, this is a fresh new trick late 50s early 60s so it's been around for a minute but yeah i think it, well it's the other thing now it's that, 50 years later <laughs> you sure. know what I mean? but it is it is the classical presentation for that yeah. effect, you know because it's it's conflict right if you don't have conflict like who cares why why are you shuffling them face up and face down like the, i you hear some people do presentations where they have some sort of contrived reason and sometimes it's just that i take the cards and turn half face up and half face down because I can, and then I can write them because I can. But when it's a story of a guy took them and he was drunk and he didn't even know he was shuffling them and they were face up and face down, like that's real conflict. And now you have to use magic. Magic has to solve the day. And that's, you know, I think that's a pretty compelling uh, presentation. Yeah, definitely. Is this, is this version here in um, Earl's book, Variations? Uh, don't, don't ask me to commit to stuff like that right now. <laughs> I couldn't say. I, I, I bet there's something similar. I mean, because what I couldn't, I mean, I was too busy watching Earl's flow. You know, I mean, it, it's a well-known fact for many years that the triumph that appears in Stars of Magic is a simplified version uh, of triumph. And it's really easy and there's nothing wrong with it at all. It's absolutely wonderful. But, you know, Vern did the, the trick with strip out shuffles. Uh, and the triumph shuffle is a much easier thing to do. It's actually a really easy and probably the easiest way to begin working with shuffles of that kind is is with the triumph shuffle. Um, so uh, I, I just don't know of all the variations because, you know, those guys knew a lot of Triumph variations. For example, it wasn't, it might've been the one in, in variations because what's happening is he's, he's got the four cards that are being produced or reversed, right? 
And so he's able to show those cards really fake. Remember how the fellow made sure that the cards were really mixed face up and face down quite neatly. And then he did some cutting that allows him to have a, a few reversed cards in the deck. And then he of course produces those cards face up and their aces. And that's, that's the thing. So I'm guessing there is a triumph very early in the variations book. And I'm, I'm guessing it's pretty close to it. You know, I would imagine um, literally the smoothest slip cut you'll ever see in your entire life. Let's it's watch some more. So smooth. He does it very neatly. Well, most people believe that all of this sort of thing is attributed to sleight of hand, uh, dexterity, uh, the hand is quicker than the eye. That really isn't absolutely true. I do everything I can to promote that belief, but it's not absolutely true. It's all dependent upon luck. I'll be very honest with you. All of these things that you see down here are very, very uh, dependent upon the element of luck. If I were to give the cards to any of you nice people here, you'd be surprised at what you could do yourselves. For instance, if you were to give the cards a simple little shuffle such as I'm doing here, and then cut them, give them a simple cut on the, on the table like that. One card might possibly fly face up out of the pack. Now, this card happens to be a king, which is a rather high card, but after all, there are four kings in each one of the decks, so it's really not that big of a coincidence. By the same token, you could also give the cards a simple cut, such as I'm doing here, and you might run across, just by luck, king number two. That's the king of diamonds, so king of diamonds so far. <laughs> So now, the third one, they do get progressively more difficult because obviously the more kings you are removing from the pack, the more difficult they are to find. That's but not if easy. I use a little bit of skill, not much, but just a little bit of skill and a lot of luck and shuffle just like they do in Las Vegas. <laughs> they might be able to find king number three. There's king number three. Now, to be very honest with you, on the last one, impossible to find by luck. For this one, I have to resort to actual. Here it comes magic uh, uh, like a mind of its own there it Ooh, that's out. touch that's a touch right there mm -hmm. yeah. you know for most people that is not a tv trick that no oh. that is not <laughs> no way <laughs> that is not the kind of thing that feels smooth and steady when the hot lights are flashing on you you know what i mean you go Ooh. for that one when you're feeling good and it's funny because I found another I found another uh, TV show that he was on as the close up magician on a magic show, right? And it's in the late '90s, and he does a spot, and all he does is that production right there. He's using that production going into something else because he has the aces and the kings, and you know you, you might know where he's going with that. But he used it as just a production of the four aces. He was in the he was in front of the the WC Fields bar. He's in the basement of the castle. And he does just the production of the four aces. And that last production that he just did, that's that spooky revelation. He did that. Same thing. But, you know, he didn't have an audience. It was him in front of like three, four people with cameras running. It wasn't like him, he was in front of an auditorium full of people. But, man, talk about putting yourself on the spot. That's a that's a very precarious little thing to uh, rely on. You know, make sure you're not shaking in your hands. So you can make that thing produce like that. That's that's really something. Now, we all love Earl Nelson. But Gary, Gary Nealon is our resident Earl Nelson of file here amongst the club. I mean, lots of us uh, spent time with Earl, but Gary spent some deep time with that book, you know, and he says it's going to be hit and run aces and it's only the production. The triumph part is not in the book. Mm. So uh, that's a uh, very important. So quick question. Is anyone else here reminded of uh, John Denver in the Oh God film? Yeah. Oh, with that haircut, you mean? I was getting that vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, totally. I, sort, I sort of want to hear the song "If You Like Pina Coladas" while Earl is working. Is it's oh That's god, you devil, song. right? It's not the it's not the whole. It's title. a happy song. They get back together, but it's weird on the way. Yeah, it's kind of weird, you know. It's about very nice people, and they're kind oh. of like having a reactionary uh, thing toward the whole leftist experience. You know, I don't know Earl, but I feel like he's nicer than that. I'm just He's saying. a lot nicer than that. I know Alex's That's family, right. and they're real Californian types. <laughs> I feel like they're really into yoga. <laughs> <laughs> He's only smiling and laughing because it's true. There's an element of truth. That's <laughs> true. I prefer that there be mystery there. I mean, you know, who am I to pull the the <laughs> curtain back on all of that <laughs> i've told you i've told you i've i've i won't say here are the movies <laughs> you told me yeah it's a it's a great that's a great thing <laughs> it, yeah that's, that's what alex sounds like when he really hopes i don't go any further <laughs> 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 
everybody's got secrets. It's okay. Tell, tell the story, man. Tell the, tell the Vegas okay. story. This is a beautiful story. So Earl, Earl had this beautiful magic and he was really an ideal magic castle act and an ideal act for the magical empire because those are really situations where people come in to see magic. People are excited about the magic. They're like grownups and they're like magic show, magic show, magic show. And it's just what you want. Earl doesn't have the kind of personality that's about busking, right? He doesn't go out into the street, bang a drum and tell everybody, shut up and bring your filthy kids over here. Get over here. You know, <laughs> that's not his style. So he would do one of these routines. And then the biggest laugh line in his show was he would say, now let's slow the frenetic pace. <laughs> and he really was the Perry Como of magic, right? If any of y'all ever saw uh, Eugene Levy do the Perry Como impression on SCTV, Perry Como is still alive. <laughs> I'm gonna live forever. So that's Earl. So he says, now we'll slow the frenetic pace. And it used to knock the room oh. dead. That line is money for him. And, and of course, money. because the show was like a quiet show, like that deadpan humor in that one spot actually made up for a lot of jokes that other people would have been peppering in. So when he got to the Magical Empire and he says, now let's slow the frenetic pace. And there was dead silence in the room. <laughs> it really unmanned him. <laughs> like it was a bad thing you know it was a real problem because for earl losing that joke joke probably felt like losing nigh on 40 percent of the humor inherent in the 20 minute show and he wasn't <laughs> having it so you'll notice that uh variations i think was printed by mark wilson productions earl used to work with mark wilson and uh alan wakeling back in the day and so that was his crew that he was hanging around with um just like when y'all saw me hanging around with Lee Asher back in the day, whenever I wasn't in that exact space, I was hanging out with Alex and Adam and partying, you know? So I picture Earl Nelson, Alan Wakeling, Mark Wilson, t-shirt, uh, collar shirts open, collar over the lapels. Absolutely. Medallions. Up, gold rings on, you know what I mean? Walking <laughs> around all the time. Puffs pulled always, over sort of, Right, always pointing at large jumbo cards wherever they go places, right? So he, he calls up Mark Wilson and he says, Mark Wilson, in the stories, people always use both names. So I called Adam Grace, said, Adam Grace. Mm -hmm. So he calls Mark Wilson. He says, Mark Wilson, I need some help. And he tells Mark Wilson the problem. And Mark Wilson says, listen here, pal. Now, I can't do a Mark Wilson impression. He says, you can't say frenetic in Las Vegas. They don't understand what that means. <laughs> Earl, it sounds like a Barcelona you. problem. Yeah. Let me help you. You say slow the breakneck pace. And Earl <laughs> said, the hell you say. Mark Wilson says, trust me. And I always picture when he says, trust me. <laughs> I bet it worked like a charm. That's awesome. <laughs> Earl says, so he gets up to the moment. He does the whole aces. Boom, 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 boom. Now we'll slow the breakneck pace. And he brings the house down. <laughs> <laughs> so, always the day, dude. You, as H.L. Mangan said, no one ever went broke underestimating the taste of the American public. That's right. <laughs> Slow <laughs> the breakneck pace. Did, would you? Who would have guessed that the word frenetic was sinking Earl's act? <laughs> and now I'm going to go ahead and, and, and throw another one of our dear magic friends on the fire. I, this is one of these humble brag things because I remember this. I remember thinking, you know, how truthful are Penn and Teller really? <laughs> I remember sitting with Teller once and saying to him, so uh, you're like a Broadway act. You know, you're like an act that kills in New York City. Anyone who's ever performed in both will tell you. It's not the same. It's not the same. Adam, you've performed a lot in New York City. It ain't the same, is it? Not the same. No. Barcelona, you performed a lot in New York City. It's not the same, is it? It's a different uh, group of people. New York City, get a rope. So, <laughs> what was I trying to tell you? Ah, so I says to tell her, what's it like performing in Las Vegas, really? Long pause, and Teller says, 
Well, it's exactly the same. And I went, okay. And that's <laughs> the whole end of the story. Wow. But it's not the same. <laughs> he is being the same. I don't know if he's being polite. I know he's always been truthful with me. All I'm saying is he's had a great time. He's been performing there for 20 years. But And I'll tell you, they have the smartest magic show that there is. And you know? if they got to dumb down words in the show, he doesn't have to deal with it. So it's, it's the same. I don't think they do. I don't. I think they do the show exactly the way they do it. And I think they, I honestly think they probably brawl in, bring in the most intellectual crowd in Las Vegas uh, relative to your whoever's doing what's the name of your friend adam your ex uh friend uh you, Dude, lance burton gold drake remember when we passed that fellow that you know you, your dad bought him a tiger once yeah yeah we, we went to meet johnny what right. happens is you drive through las vegas and what you see is on billboards everywhere you see dudes that used to work the parlor like on billboards with like superimposed cats like large cats and it's weird because I thought cats were like not hip anymore. Are cats? Yeah, I, thought, I thought that was over. Are tiger shows out? Yeah. Yeah. Can tell us, are, are tiger yeah. shows done? Yeah, they're done. Pretty much. Yeah. What if the tigers know how to deal the cards in the two piles and cut and turn over? Different kind of show. Might be ah, Not Kate's. Not Kato's. Just Kate's cats. All right. My medication wore off. Let's fire it up. <laughs> <laughs> More magic. More magic. I'm going to rise Rich. to the occasion here and show you something not with a full deck of cards, but only with these eight cards that we so conveniently come across here. Dude. As a matter of fact, the kings and the aces being the highest cards in the deck make that rather easy, but I think I'm going to eliminate the kings. This will make it even easier to understand. We'll get back to those in just a moment. Just concentrate on the aces for a moment, if you will. And we'll do it one ace at a time, very, very slowly. There's the ace of hearts. Watch. Look at that. Very slowly. Indeed. Oh, slight baby. discrepancy. Now, that king is supposed to be over there, you see. What's happening is they're changing places one card at a time. That was the first one to go across. Watch oh. it happen. Oh, Again. Another king, another ace change places. Now, that does leave me with only a couple of aces remaining, which quickly become a couple of kings. Boom. That part's nice. <laughs> but it would be even better, I think, if I could just give the cards a little shake like that and start over uh, again uh, uh, with uh. the aces and the kings. Great. Hit call. Thank you. Great. Couple things there. First of all, y'all just saw Earl Nelson do the Elmsley count exactly the way I showed you how to do it during count night. Bless you, Ethan Ross. It was not with that grip way down at the back right corner. I know you think I'm not paying attention, but I heard that. <laughs> right? But that ex same exact uh, pacing and sound and rhythm. Second, if you go back to that first double, you'll see the total difference between California and uh, New York in an instant when Earl, when Earl clicks that card just once to emphasize its singularity, it's conceivable that that's really what's happening. Right? He's not doing this, right? As old Shakespeare used to say, methinks the lady doth protest too much. Don't click when you're not being chased. Am I right? <laughs> now, you clever members, go back and make sure to watch our last hour favorite tricks, and you can really now pinpoint Gary's cool, cool handlings of the stuff in Reset, because that's Earl doing it. Again, incidentally, you guys on the panel, you notice that Earl is doing stuff on TV. You know, there was an old TV show when we were growing up called You Can't Do That on Television. <laughs> yeah, that should be the theme. And it describes Earl's double card handling. Yeah, it's, it's pretty pretty ballsy to do that level of, of very difficult technical magic while the camera is a foot from your hands. I mean, it's just, it just goes to show that he really, the touch that he's that he has it, it, it you know you can you can't really shake the guy it, i don't rattle. think you can he doesn't rattle no he doesn't and if rattle. you're a fan of that material like if you're you know at the time when those books came out if you were able to see that television show you'd have an example of how it's done 
under the lights and you see that that's what the ideal is that's what the bar is you know what this guy's doing it's amazing he's doing all those hard moves under the lights in front of cameras i mean that's that's a lot of pressure and he's doing it looking like he's as cool as a cucumber like it's not even a big deal it's just another day at the office it's it's very inspirational man it's very inspirational when I first moved to Las Vegas in 1996 and I went over to Lee Asher's house in the afternoon and he said, Earl Nelson's coming over to hang out. That's kind of when I knew why I left the provinces, you know, right. that's why I, I was like, that's why what I'm happens here. at lunchtime. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, Steve Forster should get a, at least win a point because he has noticed it is possible. If not John Denver from, uh, Oh God, Bob Ross. Is mm-hmm. our next good bet for mm-hmm. Earl's? Uh, cool. He was just the coolest guy. Right? Parentage. All the right. Seventies. The seventies, man. What are you gonna do? The you coolest. Know, if you guy. wanted to take a nap on a nice Sunday afternoon, you throw on some Bob Ross. If you're not into go, you know it's dinner time. You know what I'm saying? You have half a brain. Do a beautiful piece of artwork before you go eat. Yeah. <laughs> See a pretty picture. Bunch of little friends over by the lake. Whoa, Ethan Ross burying the lead. Our own Ethan Ross was related to Bob Ross. I take back what I said about your Elmsley Count Isn't technique. True. Carry forward, young. You know what? I, I hope it's I, true. Are you having <laughs> fun? Because next time they say I'm going to say Ethan Ross is related to my brother Ethan. Please tell me that. Oh, he, he said was. I wish. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah okay. I don't know. Say, I hope it's true. Being, you tried being Ethan's brother a while. We'll see if you wish. <laughs> we'll see. Tell me, is there more Earl the Pearl waiting for us? Yeah. Oh, I'd so, like to do something right now. You've been so kind as to uh, to help me out with this. In the way of what I call loosely a challenge type of effect in magic. <laughs> and that is I invite you to watch as closely as you possibly can. And I'm going to do it as slowly and deliberately as I possibly can. And for it, I'm only going to use a few of the cards. Only a few cards. Now, it's no secret how many cards I use. In fact, let me count them again so that there's no mistake. I should have precisely 12 cards. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12... Oh, I think I've got oh, one extra card, here, which can easily be eliminated. We don't need the Queen of Diamonds for this. Now, the idea is really simplicity itself. I'm going to utilize also, besides the, the uh, 12 cards, the ever popular four aces. Now, the reasons that magicians use those so much is because they are the highest cards in the pack, <coughs> and they're the easiest cards to remember. Now, it works out mathematically that I can allow three cards for each one of the aces, and that's exactly Mm. what I'll do. Mm. I want you to remember one thing. The aces will stay face up and in full view at all times. Perfect. I love to watch it. I do. (laughs) I wonder, Charlotte, if I could ask you just to place your hand over that pile of cards. Would you do that? Would you like to please name, Gene, any one of the three remaining aces you like? It doesn't make any difference. You're jaded. Uh, Sure. No, 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 no. I mean, in a good way. I felt like I I saw all those cards. (laughs) He didn't do anything. Watch the ace of hearts. Yeah. Cards may have been in his pocket. Look at me. Yeah. No longer present. Would you like to also name one of the other two aces? The ace of clubs. The ace of clubs it is. Watch the ace of clubs. Get ready for that, Elmsley. One last look at it, all right? Snap. Boom, 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 boom. Such a great way to do it. <laughs> he, shouldn't be, he shouldn't be pulling on that last card. How about the Ace no of Diamonds? Rob. Is that all right with you? The Ace of Diamonds. The Ace of Diamonds, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to let you see right to the last. Oh, nasty, nasty yeah. Hobbit. Mm-hmm. Dirty. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> that's, uh, that's why we love Earl. Earl Nelson. That's not the full thing, obviously. I'm I don't dirty. want Charlotte mm-hmm. to touch anything that may be under your hand. But as dramatically as you know how, Lift your hand straight up in the air. Would you turn those cards that are face down, face up, one at a time? Boom. That's one. Uh, boom. That's two. And that's three. Um, boom. Thank you very much. And as a bonus Thank effect, you. he managed to take that concave bend out of the cards just by snapping his fingers. <laughs> a little squish. <laughs> like she just automatically just, those cards were smooth and even.
Does anyone else get disturbed when a playing card just seems to have been living in a different orientation than the rest of the deck? <laughs> it's like, what is it? That deck was living in a house, but those cards look like they've been living in a, an apartment or maybe even a, a tenement. What's happening? There was something that he did in that routine where he showed that he showed those three cards on the first piles and then he turned those over before he dealt the three on the last pile. And I felt like I had seen all 12 cards. That was a great subtlety, right? It actually it really fooled was. me. It actually fooled me. I, I forgot. I, I was able to forget what we were doing until he got a little further because it just went by. Let's not forget, because at first he shows the cards, then he counts the cards, right? And then he's got that extra card. Can we watch it again? Can we just watch it again? Was that extra card the thing? It was something. It no, was. Yeah, it, it was. It was a way to show that extra card as potentially having you back as he pulled out a different card and put it in. It was all just a very delicate little dance that was happening with those cards so that you just felt like you saw everything. Let's, let's watch it again. I would rather watch Earl do a trick twice than see someone else's new trick. All right, let's do it. Let's. And watch incidentally, it. while you're watching it, while you're watching it, I just want to let you all know: listening to Earl deal cards, he's got. You know, you guys, you guitarists, you have tone. When you listen to the way Earl deals his cards to the table, it's got the most lovely soft snap. You need a good card with nice body for that. You need a good B stock card with a nice. Snap. Bad Steve. I was just gonna say, possibly can as a guitar player, we would say he's very tasty. Oh yeah, tasty a lot of tasty music. licks in there. Yeah. A lot of tasty licks in there. <laughs> Look at those sweet thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> Look, now he's moving too fast. He's still. Slow like, down, girl. Like they're purring. He checked the back of that card. Oh, what's going He's on? He's on TV, man. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't know that that was part of the deal, but maybe it was. Now, I think he was double, triple checking. Yeah, he's doing a little checking. Yeah, okay. It's fine. It's fine. Looks like a few pieces of furniture just came out of mom's attic there. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this guy. Ooh. Got an ace over there and an ace over there. I call that the long deck diamond. Okay. I said, buy some new ones for the TV appearance, man. He did. He did. Yeah, really? He yeah. Did. They were in his pocket. Be nice. <laughs> Here we go. This is what Adam was talking great. about. Great. That's a great subtlety, man. But I'm still, you see, I didn't notice this bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. I just, <laughs> I just got smoked. Yeah, that's good. I want you to take it back earlier to when he removed that stuff from the deck. Nah, don't do it. There was a commercial break. <laughs> Listen to wait. Look at the look at this. Look at how he does each one different. A lot of folks don't do that. A lot of folks. That's one method there. It's the same basic situation, mm -hmm. but that's one type of vanish. Now, rather than do the same thing twice, which is like boring. Now he's doing a second to third, which leaves us into a sweet Elmsley pulling, pulling on that last card. I'll bring that up next time I see him. <laughs> <laughs> like, Earl, I, saw you you once that card? I saw you once in the 70s doing the Selmsley count. Yeah, I saw this video. I want to create <laughs> look, at this, look at this. This is sneaky. That ace is, this is really good. Boom. That's what that is. <laughs> that's really cool. Right there. That, when we're saying tasty licks, that's, that's a tasty lick. Yeah, yeah. Hey, y'all, just so y'all know what, what Earl did there was just a simple bottom deal off of a packet, right? which is the easier than it looks. You can take two cards and try that yourself and it'll look just as good. Just a quick note about Earl Nelson. Out of all the gin joints and all the towns in all the world and all the card guys you could ever know, if I had the temerity to be such a, a foolish guy as to be like, Earl, why were you pulling with that last card in the 70s? You know, what was going on there? Earl would say, you know, I made the decision to pull that card right before showtime and I didn't even know then how it was going to work out, but it has sat with me ever since. I don't know <laughs> that he would have that experience with this exact phase, but that's the kind of guy Earl is. You could say, hey, Earl, what's going on with that? What was up with that double? He would be like, that double? I know what double you mean. You mean in the four and a half phase of the seven phase thing? <laughs> right before the D'Amico? I'd be like, yes. He'd be like, let me break it down. 
Earl. This has haunted me for 30 years. He's passionate. He's passionate about a sweet dealing. Do we get one more? Do we get one more tasty lick, Adam? Or are you going to call it, Daddy? No. Let's let's take a look at one more. It's a quick one, but it's a good tasty Earl lick as well. All right, here we go. Play one for Jay. I saw his magic room yet. Well, not surprisingly, the uh, cavorting aces does use the four aces. We'll only concern ourselves with the black ones right now. One on the face and one at the back of the deck. Look at one that at the thingy. face, one at the back. Interestingly enough, if I just give the cards a little shake like that, Jerry's nuggets. the aces are gone. Well, not completely gone, That's because if we look right th through the center of the pack, we'll find them together in the middle. Two black aces. Of course, it does stand to reason that if we just uh, reverse those actions and shake them once again, that the aces would come right back to their original position. Let's make it a little bit more interesting by placing the two red aces in the center. Remember, black on the face, red aces in the center, and a black ace at the back. Red on the inside, black on the outside. Until I shake the cards like that, it is. And of course, then we have a red ace there, a red ace at the back of the pack, and closer examination reveals the two black in the center. Now let's leave those two black in the center for just a moment and add a red ace to the face and a red ace to the back. A little shake. No red aces, only to be trapped in the center between those two black aces. Cavorting. Hey now. now <laughs> Maybe someone out there in chat can help me because I'm feeling like that particular pass configuration, it's either the Elliott shift, I think it might be called the Elliott shift, which if it's uh, what I'm thinking of, uh, Kaufman used to say in his uh, extensive thinking on the pass, a lot of which I totally disagree with, that there are really three types of shifts, a Herman shift, a classic shift, and, th and that first one. And you'll notice it, the moment on it's different. He right? calls it the wrist shift or the wrist kill shift. Well, the and, thing and it's the opposite of what a regular pass is. It's happening at the end rather than at the beginning. But I think it's the Elliott shift. I mean, look, when we do a, a pass like that, like a LePaul pass, you'd either have to come from the right hand or you'd be in the left hand, and then your hand turns over and you'd have the change, something like that. But what Earl is doing is he's actually coming over. And I'm going to expose this because I don't even do this one. And then the thing is shifting up, right? That's correct. That's correct. And, and it, it comes up there. And so I'm. it's making me, because one of our cl classes is doing a unit on shifts, it's making me really curious to get the write-up of the old Elliott shift because uh, I think it's an interesting thing. Is I thought as soon as Earl transferred over to the turnover pass proper, it looked like he really preferred the other one more. The, that one that you just did, that's the one that looks cleanest in his hands. Then he's also doing the he's doing the LaPaul spread pass as a turnover. And then he's doing the jiggle pass, which I don't think looks as good as that first one. Well, that first I, one is so clean in his hands. You know, just doing the pass face up as a color change is a real East Coast Vern, post Vernon. It's almost like the apocalypse of Khan. It's like Mega City. It's like Judge Dredd. It's like in the universe where people are thinking the classic passes for color changes all there is no law right so things have gone to smack now this is i think the reason it looked that way is because earl is a true vernonite and his magic is so mysterious and beautiful it's not format did you notice that that jiggle pass y'all had a dis aside from the fact that it was flashing had an entirely different vibe to everything else he does yeah it was yeah. rushed and hurried and it's not it's not smooth. All the other stuff he's doing is very smooth and very deliberate. And that's like a jerky, weird thing that's happening in the middle of all of that really smooth ocean, right? The real calm he, he, ocean. He, there's like this little splash up. He knows he's on camera. He knows it's not uh, ideal. And he's decided to do it because all the kids dig color shifts because they're tasty licks, as uh, mm -hmm. Alex would say. And... Uh, and I think it shows, you know, I think, I think Earl's too well schooled in the classic school to really feel great about doing a color change like that. And I, I think it looked like it. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm a huge fan, man. Huge fan. Yeah. Love us some Earl Nelson. Hey, right, Alex, guys. what is it you, oh, I'm sorry. We got to run. I just wanted to know what Alex was saying about that cavorting aces structurally. It was different than the one we were studying. 
Oh, I don't think so. I just, I was just saying that I think that the structure is what we should take away as a lesson from what Earl did today, not necessarily the choice of the, the moves. Uh, let's ask Gary real quick. Oh, wrist turn, bluff, shift. So apparently we can find that yeah. in the variations book and we can vary it. Thank you, Adam. <laughs> take it away, boss. Thanks for joining us, guys. Do us a favor, hit like on the video. That tells YouTube we're doing a great job. And while you're at it, smash the subscribe button. You'll be notified when we go live with new magic videos, which we're doing tomorrow and the next day. By the way, if you've never tried out a proper magic club, hit the link in our description and join Conjure Community Club. We are the best at what we do, which is hang out and do magic. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, uh, magic uh, club in our price range. <laughs> We're the best magic club in our price range. <laughs> All right, we'll see you next time.